Okay guys, let's go through what you're going to need for this project. You are going to need a large sheet of paper. Um, I'm using a graph paper, you don't have to. You're going to need little skull beads. Again, um, they come in different sizes. Um, I'll double check the size of mine later, but your sizes have to be um, consistent throughout. You're going to need two large black or dark brown buttons. And you're going to need red and a grey matte plastic. Oops. Now, I've ended up with two four hole. That's so I can get the right size buttons. So, those. Then you're going to need some clipping hair extensions. Now, because the doll we're doing, we need pink and orange. And you can see, I've got quite a few here. I've got quite a of some white fleece. It is a fleece material that is used. You can tell that by the blur on it. You could use felt. So you could get away with fouls, but I'm using a white fleece and yeah. Then we'll need some black. Now I've got it's like this plasticky material, which is actually more like a Lexus dress than it is a Lily's dress. Lily's dress has almost like a crocodile print embedded into the material. So I've actually gone with one that's more like a Lexus dress than it is Lily's dress. Last thing is again, colour is down to you, some pinky purpley material. I've actually got two to have to go to the new ones. Um, because the one's more of the right texture, the one's more of the right colour to do the part of the dress. So, how is we start off with sketching Lily? Uh, start very much so. Started very much so with the head. Doesn't matter how rough this starts out because this is actually going to get cut out to be used as our pattern. If you notice, her head though is very much one side, you know, it's, it's very much it's got curved this side and then it kind of sticks out on this side. Um, I'd almost describe it as triangular in shape, but it depends how you want to describe it. Now you've got a panel of purple, you have the two arms that are not the same. Now, obviously, when I started drawing this, I thought, oh, that's how big she's going to be. She's actually a bit bigger than this. So then there's two legs, which are two sausage shapes. Now, she could be made in a variety of ways. You could make a complete lily and then make the dress to go on top. Or you could make the dress instead of making the body. It all depends on how much fabric you've got um, as to which way you are actually going to make her. Now, I'm going to make it this way, where the body is sewn into the dress, well into the purple actually, and then the dress goes over, there's an overlay, but her body's going to be in the purple colour, where her hair's going to go, and if I zoom in really close you can actually see where I've drawn around the buttons different times and made sure everything fits, and um, the reason she's ended up so big is to fit, it's to fit the skull mouth. Fit 15 in the mouth, the mouth has to be quite large. Um, so, because the man has to be quite large, I ended up making the doll large as well. So, um, I will go and I will cut my material and I'll be back in a moment. Once you've cut out your lily doll to this point, so obviously she's just a paper shape. What I want you to do is just hold the lily doll, like the Lexa Bliss does um, in the show a couple of times. If you Google a picture of Lily of Lexa Bliss, go to a mirror, try holding her off. I know obviously it's just a piece of paper, but hold her off. That way you'll know if she's the right size for you. If you're doing this for somebody smaller, then Lily can be smaller. If you're doing somebody, Lily for somebody, I'm five foot six. So obviously I'm gonna have slightly bigger hands than some people, smaller hands than others. I can hold her and I can see that she's the right size for me. She's the right size because obviously I've laid out my buttons and my mouth. Make sure she's the right size for you. And just hold her off. Try holding her with your mirror. Um, 
and then you will know, you see I've added the legs now, um, you will know if she is the right size for you. Now when this comes to making it out of the fabric, this will have a, an inside body to give it the size that I want. I have put the buttons on the shoulders, face on, and she is the right size for what I want, and now I can go try the fabric. So oh, we have our beautiful eyes. We're going to take some white paint. Okay. And just straight on there. thick. Um, or if you end up with a bit of splodging through, we can pull that back through afterwards. But we may need to do two layers of this, but we're going to reasonably thick. Yes, I'm being a bit lazy because I'm splodging straight into the button. Straight into the button. Staying within the ridge. this one because yeah we're a bit uneven but we're going to leave that overnight to dry and then we're going to come back to it tomorrow if you actually take a closer look so before i let this dry there is a little bit of red just in this bit here just where it crosses so i'm just going to put that on there as you can see I'll move these off to one side So I have my headpiece of my fabric, I've put my buttons and my little skulls on just to make sure how they fit. What I have here is a sorry, right way up, brush head pen in black. So I'm actually going to get to marking this because the last thing you want to do is stuff it and the markings go wrong and then you're trying to unpick your work. So because we've got our eyes, if you actually look our eyes need eyebrows. So they can literally be roughly drawn on. Now the smearing, if you actually look at the original design, is on there. So then we do our nose, which is very crudely drawn. And then what we're going to do is a rough do with these is using the fine liner just mark approximately where the button's gonna go now why have I done that you ask because if you actually look she's got blue behind her eyes so now I'm gonna take a brush be a bit more careful if you want or you can make it more crude this is where it is entirely up to your imagination now, we suspect there's multiple dolls 
So each doll, as they look handmade, will be slightly different. I suspect if you have makeup, you could probably use makeup to do this. But I don't wear makeup myself, so it'd be very hard for me to do makeup. Now for this bit, those away for now and take them off our skull beads. For this bit I'm going to use red acrylic around the outside and a little bit of black on the inside. So let's get to the black first. Once it's done, and once you're happy with it, because obviously you can keep going, you can make it bigger, or you know, you, you can do it how you want to do it. Um, just gonna leave it overnight, and we'll come back to it tomorrow with our buttons. Okay, so our last little bit of painting is the Alexa Bliss on the front of the dress. Now you're going to need a white and a pink for this, some actual fabric paint for this one so we start with a line around the outside and you might want to practice this because it's a bit of a circle so sewn the sides on the dress so I don't end up going over the sides with my painting. Um, obviously you don't sew the seams at the top and next time we see this dress we will be adding the buttons to it. So once you've done your Alexa list in the middle again this has got to be set to one side to dry and we can move on to the sewing. Of the other items this one like I said the sewing is just down to 
seems. So I just wanted to have a little hint here for anybody who has trouble with um, tying the thread. If you've got your thread doubled over or single, it really doesn't matter. If you take that thread, you wrap it around your finger and you roll it off and then pull. It does actually give you a little knot in the end. Now some people will say this knot can come undone quite easily. I've never found it come undone. Give you a good little tug. I find it a really good way to tie a knot and get it reasonably near the end. It's just a little hint. Uh, may help some of you. Um, whether you, as you may have a better way to tie the knot, but I actually find that a really quick and easy way to tie a knot in the end of my thread. Okay, so I have all my bits that need sewing with me. The first thing I'm going to do is sew on the eyes. I'm not gonna do that on camera because it's a lot easier to do off camera, but the eyes are a lot easier to sew back so put the eyes on not going to put the teeth on um, because they'll be a lot easier to position and see where we want them once we've got the um, her sewn together and stuffed so the next time you'll be joining me I'll be in the sewing room okay so once you have your dress in this state and paint's a bit dry you need to add your buttons again I would do this before it goes on the doll you could use it to secure the dress to the doll, but if you actually look at the doll, along where the purple is here, you're actually going to overstitch between the dress and the doll. So, you need to add your buttons. Black thread, mine's doubled over. You can see, probably not, but mine's doubled over, just normal needle threaded, black thread doubled over. Um, you could use a thicker thread if you've got it. I highly recommend quilting thread. It's really nice and thick and strong. So, take these, you're going to put these on as if it was actual straps, and then we will come back when it comes to actually doing some more sewing onto Lily. Okay, so welcome to the sewing room. So, what am I going to, you may have noticed this is a bit different. What I've done is overlocked the edges so it doesn't fray once it's all sewn together. So, what I'm going to do now is make two sides of the doll, which basically means taking my, well, my front and my back, and adding the legs and arms um, to the parts on purple. I'm going to do that and I will come back to you because I really don't think you need to see the noisy sewing machine. So I will do that and I will be right back. Okay, so I now have two fully sewn, as in two sides of a little doll. Um, I've sewn inside the overlocker stitch, so when it comes out, you can't see those stitches. It doesn't matter if you can, because obviously Lily looks like she's been hand stitched from the outside. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin this from right side to right side, and when I sew it together, you're going to need to leave a gap out there to actually put the filling in Lily. Now. She does look like she's been stitched from the outside and that's fine. We're going to put those stitches on afterwards. This is so Lily will stay together. This is so this is not a doll that you're going to have for 10 seconds. You're going to pick it up once and it's going to fall apart. Um, doesn't really matter what colour thread is on your machine. Too bad, too much. Um, because that's going to be hidden. It's going to be inside. And as we just said, it's actually going to be hidden by our outside stitches. So we can go around and we can make sure that all the joints line up. So making sure these joints here, which are on camera, actually do match. So I'm going to go finish pinning again, like I said, just making sure all of our little joints here are pinned together. And then I'm going to sew it together and I will join you back here. For those of you who are thinking I've missed a step, yes, I did. So I'm going to quickly cover it. So what you need to do is grab your hair. You're going to, to sew this into the head. You take your grips, you put them in the middle. Split your hair. So that's coming out one side and that's coming out the other. Now obviously this isn't coming out, this is going into your doll. Um, so we're going to have to use clips here to make sure that this stays. I did forget, so, but I did you know as soon as I could. Now what I've done is I've alternated between orange and pink to get the best combination. Use whatever length hair you need. Now 
I've got a bit of a blonde in there as well, so what I'm actually going to do is change the blonde to being more in the middle. So I have orange, I have, well, I have pink, I have orange, I have the blonde, then we go orange, so in the middle, sorry, pink, orange, and pink. So you get whatever you want, you make it as thick or as thin as you want now, obviously when she's got her on there she's playing with her so you get whatever you think is the correct what you think now what you're gonna do is get your head you're going to position this approximately where you think it should go and then you're going to sew over this bit so again we got this going in over. The best bet is actually to use quilting clips. Get it where you want it, clip it where you want it and then as you sew obviously you sew over it. Now on the doll you'll actually see some tiny tiny little hairbands on the inside. You can add those now if you want make it easier or you can add them afterwards or you can even leave them if you're able to get this tight enough going through here you may not even need it but put them on the inside if it's easier you can use a plastic bag put the hair on the inside in the plastic bag so it's not moving around as much it is whatever is easiest for you now if you're doing this by hand and you're just doing it on the outside just make sure these are on the inside again separate put them where you want them clip them and sew over them it's whatever's easiest for you but leaving the clips on means that it's not just going to be hauled out it gives it something to wedge now what you can do as well is you can wrap this in either cotton wool um, quilt batting or just a piece of fleece just to make sure that that isn't being felt through it so you do whatever you need to do to make that I'm gonna go get a piece of batting to wind around that to make sure that it's not quite so hard on the outside and so it keeps my divide through the middle. So, stick bag, wadding, positioned, pinned and sewn. Okay, so I've started to stuff Lily's head just so we can see what Lily's head is going to look like with some stuffing because you can see there's a couple of hairs that have escaped and went to the wrong place. Now, you're going to take 15 of your skull beads and you're going to position them. Now, if you actually look at Lily and take a close look, a lot of them seem to be paired together. So try and get as close to it as you possibly can. You need 15 e beads and you're going to sew them out them. So it's going to be hand done. Unfortunately, you can't cheat on this one. What do is pull up a picture of Lily. Position my beads. Next. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're actually going to give Lily a mouth. So, what I've done here is laid my beads out, how they are on the mouth. Um, I've gently stuffed Lily's head. You can see, she's actually got stuffed. Um, so I can actually make sure that I'm going in the right places. And I'm gonna hand sew these on using a thick thread, a good thick black thread, but just make sure that your needle will actually go through the hole in your skull. Um, so these are actually 9mm, uh, they're called Howlet Skulls, um, which is what gives them this lovely two-tone colour rather than just being a single colour. So I am going to go and I am going to sew these onto Lily's mouth and then I will come back to show you what the next stage is. Right, so Lily now has her teeth. She still looks a bit too um, bulky, as in forward backwards, but that's why these stitches around here are going to come in. Um, what, what I've done is made sure I've stuffed her enough that you can't feel the clip from the hair clips. See, I've put little bands in, and mine happens to be pink because it's what I've got. Um, so what I now need to do is fill the body and the legs and the arms but only lightly because we're going to do the stitching on the arms and the legs and the head then we're going to put the dress on. Now the dress obviously isn't massive and it's going to have to go on from the bottom because it's not going to fit over her 
peg, so it's going to have to go in on the front underneath. As you can see, once it is on, the reason I'm leaving it off is so that we can stitch up where our stuffing is. Now, just another little hint here. If you can get yourself hold of some of these, these are great for getting stuff in into the arms and things. Not only can you grip the stuffing, if you can do it, not only can you grip the stuffing to move it in, but you can actually use it to poke the stuffing where you need to poke it. So, yes, not really um, a traditional sewing um, item, but they are brilliant. So I am going to lightly stuff the arms and then I'm itch on the lady's neck, head. I'm going to come down the arms, around the feet, and then press on before I fill the rest of the body. So I will join you. So Lily has her mouth, and I'm starting to do the stitches around the outside. Literally, just going around the outside, pinching on the seam, and stitching. I'm using thread doubled so that it shows up a bit better. I'm not doing it particularly tidy. I'm going back every now and then just to get a couple of crossed over stitches. It's one of those, it, it's very well done to look tatty. It's another one to try and actually do it. So, you just have to try to not be neat, which is easier said than done. As you can see, the stitches do show up. Um, it's up to you how it's going on the face. Do alter it, as I said, every now and then. Oops, but I'm not, because that's using a double, that's what happens. You just have to gentle with it. Oh, maybe not. This one looks like it's going to be um, a bit of a so-and-so. Hang on a second. There we go. Go back. Forward. Just keep pinching. Keep going around until you've gone around the head. Then we're going to have, then we're going to basically, I mean at the moment she's stuffed on the head, she's not stuffed anywhere else. Uh, we're going to stuff as we go, so the next thing, the next place to stuff is actually going to be arms, and then we're going to do the same again on the arms. So, go take your time with this one if you want to, but the whole point is that it looks scruffy. Um, so obviously if you're somebody that can do it scruffy, great. If you're like me and you're kind of um, going against every fibre of your being to make it scruffy, take your time, keep looking at the pictures of her and do it that way, but make her as scruffy as you can. If you do have any little scruffy ends where you've had to join, leave them. The point is she's meant to be tatty. I mean, these little ends is brilliant. If you actually want to leave some intentionally, that is entirely up to you. I am going to go and I'm going to put some stuff in my arms and repeat the procedure on the arms. when it comes to the feet if you actually look on the pictures that you can get on the internet 
she actually appears to have toes. So all that is, is a longer stitch. And I would do it twice. This next bit is completely optional extra, but what you can do is make a little pouch and fill it with poly pellets if you want it to be able to sit better. And basically you just insert it in through the little hole where you can put your stuffing in and it then sits underneath the stuffing on the bottom and it should mean that she sits a bit better. Like I said, completely optional extra. All you do is you sew a little pouch and then you fill it as much or as little as you want with the pellets. going around Lily, I finished off going around here and her arms and around the back and now all there is to do is actually take her hair out of the plastic bag, find out and we actually have one finished Lily doll and she's quite happy creeping should sit up I will take some pictures and add them to the end of this video I hope you have enjoyed my video on how to make a lily doll this is my first instructional video um, and I hope to be making some more um, and so the only other thing left to do really is trim your hair if you do need it shorter but that's entirely up to you but voila lily is done <laughs>